Welcome to Manna from Heaven with Sharon Gaines Lee. God says to us in Philippians 4.19 that he would supply all of our needs according to his riches from heaven. Aren't you ready to eat? I am. Everything we need pertaining to life and godliness is wrapped up in our relationship with Christ Jesus. And he supplied everything we need to live this life. So come join me. Let's have a conversation and eat together. Hurry up. Don't miss out. Come on. Come on. Naomi was born and raised in the UK, but has ties to America through her mother. Her upbringing in her Christian home shaped many views early on, but came to the actual test when she first encountered a health crisis at the age of 19. The last 11 years have brought on trials and tribulations through two brain surgeries, one eye surgery, and three radiation treatments, and countless procedures, scans, and MRIs. However, her faith in God has remained and increased to greater depth. She recently turned 30, and in a recent online post, she said that she can only look back on her life with thankfulness and gratitude for what she has experienced outside of health issues, outside of health issues, including her nieces being born, traveling to new countries, and completing and completing a degree and a master. Wow. Mm -hmm. Naomi, I want to welcome you to Manor from Heaven with Sharon Gaines Lee. I am so excited that you are with me today, and I so want to hear your testimony because it will encourage so many, including myself, and encourage me when I read your testimony. So please give us what you have. Give us what God has given you because, of course, you know it wasn't just for you, but it was for those who you encountered as well, would you say? Yeah, thank you so much for having me and um, giving me the opportunity to do this. It's really just so good to always share hope and truth and what God has done in our lives. Yeah. Well, <laughs> how did you keep yourself from getting bitter in all of this? Because this is a situation. I mean, you, you can tell me this story and we can have this interview for half an hour, but this was your life at one time. Yeah. How did you keep yourself from being bitter? concerning this yeah I think you know, the scripture that comes to mind oh there's two actually it's in um in the psalms mm. where it said, blessed is a man who trusts in God mm. and I love that when we trust usually it's like a transactional thing I trust you you trust me that's it right but with God you're blessed to trust mm -hmm. you're getting more out of it and you're in a, a better position when you trust God because he blesses you for doing that yes 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 so, um that's one thing and then the second one is in James where it says consider it all joy <laughs> right. of his trials mm -hmm. and tribulations and I did it's oddly <laughs> enough I did <laughs> mm -hmm. you know despite everything I'm like that God has so miraculously saved me from every single hurdle and there was loads there was just like one thing after another yeah yeah and, you know i'd look at my mom and be like are you serious like is this really happening mm -hmm. that you know i just got out of that dilemma and now this new one has just kicked off mm -hmm. but we were like all the more adamant to keep mm -hmm. persevering, keep mm -hmm. praying, keep persevering in prayer to press in because the reward was so much greater than yeah. just going in the towel and the reward mm -hmm. was life the reward is jesus himself and his promises so mm -hmm. um, and and you know there's some still some down days but god has given me such a lease of life despite everything and there are certain things that i've been told that i'd live with for the rest of my life certain mm -hmm. deficiencies of not having this or that function anymore. <gasps> right right but i almost forget i have those Mm -hmm. thing you know I, I still don't hear my right ear but I almost forget that and I still am able to socialize and be in situations and there's other elements too that I'm like despite this I'm gonna be confident in God Naomi I remember one time looking at a picture and your mouth was to the side but it's not now yeah what but that, yeah that was incredible because um it took a year and two months. I had complete facial palsy, drooped down to one side. I had to have 
um, an eye surgery because it drooped down so low that it was causing my eye to be dry. Mm -hmm. And I don't have tears anymore, which is why they did the surgery to protect it. Okay. Um, and that was probably one of the hardest things. Okay. Having facial palsy because it's your face; it's your main yeah, yeah, yeah introduction to mm -hmm. anyone. Mm -hmm. But I kept praying, and I I just kept praying because I saw the persistent in other situations that I experienced prior. God came through, so I'm like, right. doesn't matter how long it takes, I'm gonna see this. Mm -hmm. And they saved every nerve, so I'm like. There's no reason. And even if they didn't save every nerve, I would mm -hmm. still pray for it because that's who God is. Mm -hmm. And so this, I, I, can't remember, I remember just sitting in it, just twitching in this one area. Mm -hmm. And it was the most exciting thing of like, I got a twitch back in my lip. Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. And then from then on, it's just grown and grown. And I got to have um, further help. So mm -hmm. in the script where it says God works all things together for us. Yeah, God. yeah, yeah. I had no facial palsy help for seven years. Mm -hmm. But because I went back into hospital, someone saw me, one of the physios, and said, you know, there's a place in South London that specializes in facial palsy. Mm -hmm. And they referred me to this place. It's like two hours away from where I live. And they were able to do such amazing therapy and help that got the muscles moving even more so than they've ever done. Mm -hmm. and I had another eye surgery that I needed there too. Um, and it was just absolutely incredible what God did. He really redeemed that and turned it around. And actually I'm better as a result, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. You know, what you said, you mentioned a scripture. You mentioned a couple of scriptures that I wrote down, but the one you mentioned out of um, James 1 and 2, and it says, and this is from the Amplified Version, and it says, consider all joy, my brethren and sisters, when, whenever you fall into um, various trials, being assured that the testing of your faith through experience, which is what you've had, produce endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. I mean, I can remember a time in my life when I, I, I thought that was an oxymoron. How can you consider it all joy when you encounter trials? You know what I mean? How can you consider it? So in your journey that you, you took, did you consider it joy when you were going through pain? Like, How does the joy and the pain come together? If you had to speak to the audience and say how that worked for you or did it not work for you like that? So I remember certain things quite vividly and when I was awake when they brought me awake from my mm -hmm. second surgery mm -hmm. it's it's a very odd sensation being put under and then coming up from that experience and I remember like first things first making sure all my fingers and toes were there and they were all working mm -hmm. and then the pain just hits you out of nowhere mm -hmm. and it was super intense like it I always say it felt like someone drilled into my head because they did. And right. I have a gap in the back of my head in both places where they went. It was just, just to give you an idea, it was just intense. And my parents are there and I'm in the ICU and they just see this frown and this like, you know, pain yeah. just freaking across my face. And they just start saying the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they just say Jesus mm -hmm. over and over again. And then I started joining in. And it was a peace that surpasses all understanding just yeah. rest on yeah. me. That yeah. yes, I was in pain, but I was able to breathe. And yeah. I could breathe deep, but my body was in anguish. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't overtaking the goodness of God, the greatness of God, that I can be in this weird oxymoron of being in so much pain. Yeah, yeah. Peace. Mm -hmm. that I just knew that I knew that I knew that I was going to be okay. And mm -hmm. that I'm going to make it through. And the same thing happened um, pretty much with a lot of all the other experiences of when I woke up and it hits you of like, oh my gosh, my body, mm -hmm. God, I can breathe through it and I can be sustained in it in such a supernatural way that when I focus my eyes on Jesus, when we, it's in Hebrews that when we, Hebrews 12, when we look to Jesus, the mm -hmm. author and perfecter of our faith, mm -hmm. um, Okay, it goes on to say more, but when it says the author, I like the 
to think of it as he wrote faith into my story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the author and perfecter of my faith, that he's given me the ability to look beyond the natural and to look to him and be sustained when it makes no sense considering my um, earthly condition, as it were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's something about, and I don't want to talk about this too long because I want to hear more of your testimony, but you know my husband went home and be with the Lord last year. And I mean, I think it is so amazing how as deep as a situation goes, God has to go deeper than those roots, doesn't he? He has to go deeper than that. So, so our encounter with him is not just a natural encounter like you know you have a little cut on your hand and so you just need a little band-aid but it's as deep as that goes I mean as deep as the pain goes God's God's revelation and his his mercy and his love and everything about him has to go deeper to lift us up in that because I can remember and I journaled I don't know if you've seen this but I would journal period periodically about the journey I was going through and I knew, I knew when God asked me to do this journaling, and you could relate to some of this, I'm sure, because I, I heard it when you said in the beginning, I wasn't willing to do it. It was like, no, I'm going through something. I don't want to journal. I don't want to write down. I'm not interested in helping anybody. I'm just in so much pain right here. And then when God asked me to do it, he knew that that was going to initially be my response. Like he knew your response all along the way and what you were going through. But I got to the point where it was like, God, okay, not my will you will be done and then I found that God speaks to us all the time he gives us what we need he 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 made a, he made a it's an end to our you know we may be in the midst of something but there's an end to it you may not feel like it's an end when you're going through it I'm sure but God has a an end through it and we come out with more than we had going in and you and I had talked and I hope I don't mind if you mind giving me if I say this title to this book Mm -hmm. mine that you no, yeah, it. <laughs> okay but, um privilege of the deep mm -hmm. privilege of the deep i want you to talk a little bit more with me about that privilege of the deep why because we would not say i would not say and i know you wouldn't th that you want everybody to go through your experience that you went through i wouldn't yeah. say i want everybody to go through. i want everybody for husband to lose their husband or to i wouldn't say that but what we are saying and what i am saying is because i went through it I came out, I have so much, so the richness of the nearness and the goodness of God that you can't explain. Would you say that? Would you say the same thing? Completely. Um, it was actually this year that that really hit me, the privilege of the deep. So as of January 22, I had two brain surgeries, two radiation treatments, right. and two eye surgeries. Um, so... I've already like been through a lot as it were at that stage. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm <laughs> You're like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I met the quota, you know. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> but um, with one of my screenings, they call it screenings, one of my scans came back and I had a tumor in my spine. Okay. And, you know, it was, again, a hard thing to swallow. I'm at this point I'm 29 again I've gone further in my life I completed a master's by this point but it, I've never dealt with spine you know it, it was completely new territory but God was the same God mm -hmm. is the same faithful God and so again it took work and it took that work of verbally speaking the truth and praising God and declaring what I was going to see mm -hmm. and um it was just, it was overwhelming, but I was just so persistent that, you know, I've seen it. I've seen God deliver me countless times. Why would he not? Mm -hmm. And my sister, Emily, uh, my younger one, she said, God has a hundred percent track record of saving me. And I'm like, yeah, he's a hundred percent. It's not 99.9. .9, it's a hundred percent. God saves me every single time. Why would he not? Why would he fail now? Mm -hmm. And so it was about a week before, a week and a half before I was about to go in for surgery. And I get a phone call and the other MRI scan I had for my head, they said another brain tumor has grown. So this is on top of the spine? Yeah, <laughs> it was ridiculous. Okay. And they said, we need to treat it. And I had told them, well, I'm having surgery in a week and a half. And they said, okay, we'll 
the surgery, the spinal one's a bit more serious. We'll deal with that first and then we'll deal with the one in your brain. And I, mm. I just remember I was, I was alone when I had that phone call and I powered through it, powered through the tears of finding out. Right. But I just remember collapsing to the floor and just crying and just being completely distraught at this mm-hmm. news. Right. It couldn't get any worse, but it did. Mm-hmm. And my parents rushed home from where they were. My brother was there. And I go downstairs and I tell Alexa to put, you know, the goodness of God on by Bethel. But she says, nope, I can't play that. You know, she does that every now and then. She said, I'll play something suggested. And the song now tell played, me that part again. Who did you ask? What did you ask them to do? You know, Alexa, the speaker. Oh, <laughs> yes. And she said she can't do that. No. And I was like, this is what I need right now. I need some worship music. Why am I not getting it? But right. she said, I'll play something familiar, uh, similar. And it was the song, It Is Well with My Soul. And I was like, okay, this is the song that I need to sing. This is what <laughs> right, I need to realize. Mm-hmm. And I played and I cried my way through it. But by the end of it, I'm like, you know what? Past the sadness, past the, you know, shock mm-hmm. and the overwhelming sense of it all, it mm-hmm. is still real with my soul. Like the, when you moved that all the way, the foundation was still there and that that strength that God's given me of that faith that was so inbuilt in me, I was like, you know what, it is well with my soul. Yeah. And I, that's when I really saw the privilege of the deep, that I can be in such a consuming, overwhelming environment, but God is there. And as you said, like, God is greater than that. It's like yeah. when, uh, when God was in the furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, yeah. Abednego in the fire, God is standing there right with them mm-hmm. and I just had this view of a deep sea diver just going down really deep and deeper and deeper where it just gets dark mm-hmm. and, light and you look around and you can't see a thing but some I heard someone once say that on the other side of darkness there is light and even in you know at the very bottom of the ocean there's fish that actually light up with color yeah. when light is exposed to it And that's what I saw that I'm just free diving in deep waters, but I'm not surrounded by waters of terror and doom. I'm surrounded by waters of his never ending love for me. It goes, Mm -hmm. you know, the scripture where it says, um, nothing can separate us from the love (laughs) of God, no no height, no depth, east to the west, like nothing. Mm -hmm. And I was submerged in such love and such peace. Mm -hmm that I was like, you know what, this is the privilege of the deep, that I can be so far down into the depths of despair, yet I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Naomi, I would ask you, what about the fear of death? Did you have to encounter that? And how did you deal with that along the way? And I can ask you that that because the enemy is not given new tactics, and he Mm. always confronts us with stuff like that. So how would... How did you handle that situation? I think my very first encounter with being faced with death was with the first surgery. Mm -hmm. And I I remember being in the ICU and I was just like a bit of a mess because the surgery was pending. It was my first one. And I was just like, I was moved from one room to this ICU, the setting me up and I couldn't sleep. Um, but in the UK, if spiritual leaders are allowed to visit the hospital 24-7, so it was okay. midnight by this night, by this mm-hmm. time. And my pastor, he came in with another pastor from India. Okay. And he read Psalm 34, mm. bless the Lord, O my soul, and mm. all that is within me, bless his holy name. And he went through that and they prayed for me and they left. Mm-hmm. And so I was better, but still restless. Right. And then all of a sudden, this intense, bright, white light came in from the left. Mm -hmm. And I felt my feet being tickled. And I felt my oxygen mask being shook (laughs) to get my attention. Right, right. And God's like, hello. And he was (laughs) like, oh my gosh. And he was like, Naomi, I am still here. Mm -hmm. 
you may have changed rooms, you may have been in a different place, but I am still here. Right. And with um, this happened actually recently with the spinal surgery. When I went under, I just had a supernatural sense that I was in the presence of Jesus. Yeah, that yeah, I yeah. Was fellowshipping with him. It was like a holding, waiting area. It was mm -hmm. like, I'm not quite in heaven, but mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, waiting while this is being dealt with down the right. line. And I just had that supernatural presence of, you know, I know where I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. I die. Mm -hmm. I know that when I wake up, I have that blessed assurance that mm -hmm. Jesus is trying to kind of carry with me as I walk through the rest of this journey here on earth. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I had that when I came to with my spinal surgery a few weeks ago, uh, maybe like eight weeks ago now. Um, that I was just fellowshipping, being so filled that by the time I went back down to earth, it was almost like a bursting of like, I just need to talk to somebody about how good God is. And what You're right, God, right. You know, and it was that assurance. That I love how they say blessed assurance. Yeah, assurance. yeah, yeah. It really is so um, precious to know that and to be able to experience that. Mm -hmm. And those are the kind of things you can't, you can read about those things in a book, but it's something about going through it. Yeah, it, it's just it's just life changing. It really is. I can remember being in a MRI myself, like maybe about fifteen years ago, and it was a situation with me with my nervous system. And I can remember being out and walking down this walking down the street. It reminded me of a New York street for some reason. And so, and at the end of that street, Jesus was there and he was beckoning me to come. And on the sideline, on the side were all these hack, hack, hacklers. Am I saying it right? Hacklers? On the sideline were these hecklers yeah. saying, you know, saying these things, you're going to die. You're mm -hmm. going to say all these things. And Jesus kept beckoning me, just come. Do not pay attention to what's going on on the yeah. side. Just keep coming. And so as I was walking towards him, I was so tempted to look and listen to what they were saying. And the, mm -hmm. G and the Lord kept speaking to me saying, don't look at them. Don't pay attention. Just keep coming. And so I came and so I touched him. And I like to say touched the hem of his garment. I didn't actually. But when I got to him and then yeah. I woke up. And I think, you know, in this time, in that, situ in that situation, I thought it was a tremendous situation that I was going through. But the encounter with God usurped authority over that. And yeah. it was like, God, you are so good. And when we have a purpose in us, as you have a purpose on you, um, and I asked that question about death because, you know, if the enemy can torment us with death, then, you know, then we can't have victory if we have fear of going to the other side. But like Paul, he said, I long to be on the other side. Mm. He said, I long to be there because he knew he had a purpose that wasn't completed, that yeah. he knew that he was going to remain here and be successful. And I look at that when I look at your life and other people's lives and I look at my life, as long as we have a purpose, those things are like, they become, they take their place in being smaller than God. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I love that. It's in a song. Uh, what a beautiful name it is that Jesus took out the sting of death. Yeah. And it's almost like, it doesn't hurt as it should do because mm -hmm. it's such joy when we die and go to heaven that yeah. it's almost like that like dagger that sting i see the sting is like a sharp mm -hmm. <laughs> thing like that's gone mm -hmm. that should be taken away by what jesus did on the cross mm -hmm. but it's a sting of death is right. completely gone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is so good to us. I mean, I love seeing you my beautiful Naomi. I haven't seen you in person since you were a teenager. We talked yeah. about this a little bit earlier, but I yeah. mean, I love hearing your journey and how faithful God is because that's a supernatural experience because you don't go through what you're going through and come out. The natural process of that is, is to not come out better, but it's to come out bitter. And if mm -hmm. God puts his supernatural on our natural and we come out with more of him, don't we? Yeah, definitely. Wow. That's, mm -hmm. that's fascinating. So, you know, we're going to have to call for a break right here. We're probably over our break. Did you keep tabs at the time? I tried to, but then I completely forgot when we started. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the editor will do it at the right place. Yeah. But thank you. We're going, we're, we're, we're going to go and then we're going to come back because I want to end this with the goodness of God. And I want to hear more of your testimony and what you have to say. 
to thank you so much for joining me from the UK. Zoom is the bomb, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> so we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Thank you. Okay. Hello, thank you for joining me today on Kingdom Purpose TV. If you love this video and want to watch it again, it will be available on my YouTube channel, Divinely Design Women of Wisdom, along with my other broadcasts. So check me out on YouTube and don't forget to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on Divinely Design Women of Wisdom. Like and describe and subscribe, not describe. Well, if you want to describe it, maybe you can do that. But like and subscribe on my YouTube channel, Divinely Design Women of Wisdom. Don't forget, I'll be looking for you.